So repentance is basically this. Here you are as a wicked, lost sinner, and then you have a change of mind, okay? So there is a change of mind going on here. And when you have this change of mind going on, we believe that's repentance. But there are two views concerning repentance, and there are many different interpretations within these two views. And we're going to cover them. But I'm going to actually show you not a brand new interpretation. I'm going to actually show you something that was easily, easily solved. All right, first thing, let me give you the two sides. So the one side is considered to be easy believism. All right, easy believism. They believe that sin has nothing to do with repentance. When you repent to get saved, change of mind, it's nothing that has to do with sin. Primarily, it's the idea that it's from a change of mind from an unbelief to believing in Jesus. That's what it is. Then there's one called Lordship Salvation. Lordship Salvation, they believe that sin is connected in repentance. That when you have a change of mind, it's a change of mind about sin. But there are many different views and interpretations for this. So we're going to go through it one by one. Alright, so easy believism, they believe that when you get saved, you can commit the worst kinds of sins. But Lordship Salvation, they demand, no, there has to be works, there has to be fruits. Easy Believism believes that a saved Christian can be carnal. But Lordship Salvation demands, no, a saved Christian has to be spiritual. Easy Believism believes that a saved Christian is wicked at the end. Lordship Salvation says no. He is spiritual at the end. Easy Believism, they believe that you are still in sin. Lordship Salvation says no, you turn from sin. And then from here there are many different levels. Common one was Jack Chicks in the Chick Track where he says willing to turn from sin, so we'll include that too, don't matter. Whatever. One view here says that you don't have to be sorry for your sins. Easy believism. Lordship Salvation says no, there is sorry. Easy believism, that's where they say it's only simply unbelief to belief. That's what the change of mind is. The change of mind is simply just from unbelief as who you are, a lost sinner, into a saved Christian. So here's a saved Christian. Lordship Salvation says, no, it's not just that. It's a belief that will grow. It has to grow. When you, get, when you believe in Jesus Christ, it has to produce. It has to grow even more. Easy Believism believes that a saved Christian doesn't surrender everything. Not surrender. Whereas Lordship Salvation demands, no, you have to surrender all. Now, there are many different levels out of this. There is one simple thing that they don't see. <laughs> it's not easy believism and Lordship Salvation. You know what it is? Those two sides are focusing on one side over the other. It's called flesh, she nature. It's a fleshy nature and spiritual nature. See that? How it was easily solved by dividing the natures? You know why? Because here's the thing. A saved person, when you have a change of mind as a wicked lost sinner from all this into this saved person, they all get all bungling up because one side focused so much on the fleshy nature, the other side focused so much on the spiritual nature. No, a saved person, he has both of these sides. Now, this is very important concerning about a saved Christian. This is what the heresy is. The heresy is eradication. That's the heresy that both sides will teach, is eradication. One side grows so much more than the other that you could hardly see the other side. So, for example, 90% of Christians, whether you like to believe it or not, they get so much in this fleshy nature, so much, that you hardly see the spiritual nature at all doing all this stuff. But here's the thing. Do we believe that the spiritual nature is eradicated, gone? No. The Holy Spirit is in there. 
The Holy Spirit is in there. Some sort, something small is in there, but it's not fully gone. It's not eradicated. The Holy Spirit is in there. We don't believe it's eradicated. But we believe that this side can grow so much that you can hardly see this. Another thing is this. You can be a saved spiritual Christian. You can grow so much on this side that you can hardly see this side, right? You see those holy men of God? They grow so much in this side, you could hardly see this side. But it doesn't eradicate this side either. No matter how spiritual you live, there is something small, some sort right there, that still remains. See, one side is true over the other. You know why? God gave you two natures. This one you have to have no matter what. One side, you can't eliminate this fully, and neither can the other side eliminate this fully. You can't. That's a heresy called eradication of flesh and eradication of spirit. There's no such thing as that. You will have those two things no matter what. And those two things will work within you no matter what. But one side can grow so much, work so much, you can hardly see the other one working at all, see? You know why? Because that's what's called growth. You see that? When you get saved in Jesus Christ, your spiritual nature has to grow. See? Because it's in there. Your spiritual nature is in there, but you have to grow. If you don't, then what? Your other side will grow, the fleshy nature. And that thing is so damnable, it can grow so much, that's going to really ruin your life. And you're going to hardly see the Holy Spirit working in your life. There is one doctrine I studied more than atheism, evolution, three and a half to seven year tribulation, dispensationalism. There is one doctrine I studied more than all that. That is repentance. There are so many different versions I've seen it. It's enough to make you puke. But all of that could have been solved if we rightly divided. See? They're all right, but the thing is they're focusing on the wrong place. Proper division. Proper division. That's why dispensationalism is so important. So no matter what both sides say about repentance, lordship salvation, it cannot deny that a Christian can do the worst kinds of sins even till the end of his life. That's found at 1 Corinthians 5, 1 and 5, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17, plus many verses, many verses that are addressed to Christians, not to non-Christians, such as Old Testament, general epistles, and other verses. And no matter what both sides say about repentance, easy believism cannot deny that sin is connected to repentance for salvation. There's no doubt about that. Acts chapter 26 verse 20, Paul talks about works meet for repentance. And that is the same message that John the Baptist preached about bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 10 talks about godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Not only that... You got tons of Great Awakening revivals. They preached hard about repentance for salvation. So either that was, either that you can call that the greatest awakening, great revival of God, or you're going to have to honestly call it the greatest awakening of Satan to deceive so many souls to hell, which I certainly don't believe, and I'm sure those honest Christians don't believe either. You got to understand this, church. Repentance is not a work that both sides try to make it to be. They make it so complicated and hard a work to do. No, it's a, it's a gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a gift. Repentance is a wonderful beauty and a gift. Look at Acts chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 18. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles, what? Granted, repenteth unto life. See, it's a grant. If you receive a grant from a government, that's not something that you work for, all right? It's extra money that you can get. It's a gift. See, it's a benefit. It's something beautiful. Because why? That's what the Holy Ghost did. When He gave you that gift, boom, that's what He did. He caused a bound, a line here. And that line He caused was a fleshy nature and a spiritual nature. There is a division over there. And what happens is that Holy Spirit will still work in you by keeping itself separated from the sins of the flesh. It will grieve you about your sin, or it could chastise you to serve God, or it can convict you, or, yes, God can even kill you. Because why? The body is what? The temple of the Holy Ghost. He can't have that, so He can kill you at the end. So look at Philippians 1. This is why this verse is a great verse on eternal security. Look at Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. 
being confident of this very thing, that he ha which hath begun a good work in you will what? will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. What a blessing. He's going to work in you all the way till the end of the rapture. That's why aren't some of you Christians glad when God chastises you here and there to serve God? Aren't you glad that God puts some kind of preaching that will convict you? Aren't you glad that God puts some kind of interference in your life? You know why? That's God's job. That's the Holy Spirit's work. His job is to do that to His children. So don't take away this wonderful doctrine about repentance. It's a wonderful gift. Both sides, what they did is that they made repentance of sin for salvation so complicated that they took away this as a gift of the Holy Spirit working in your life and mine. That could have been solved. See, it's a change of mind of who you are. That includes good works too, see? Because all your works is nothing but filthy rags. It's a change of mind of who you are from this into what? This, a saved person. And this saved person will have what? These sides. And one side can grow more than the other. There is no such thing as eradication. One side cannot eradicate the other side.